Toronto receives a 2020 first round pick, 15th overall. Uh, Philip Hollander, Evan Rodriguez. I don't know how to say David's last name. Warsawski. Steve Warsawski. Yep. Pittsburgh receives Kasperi Kapanen, Jesper Lindgren, and Pontus Aberg. That's the trade. Pontus. That's it. It's not That's bad. That's the trade. Not bad at all. Now not I bad am, at all, Mr. I'm, Dubis. Guys, ask me what I'm doing right now. What am I doing? Uh, you're uh, racing to get to a fashion event because you heard someone important would be there to answer questions. No, I'm reading the comments from the Pittsburgh Penguins Instagram page oh. when the trade was announced. Oh. Oh. You ready? Oh. So oftentimes, usually each team's fan base feels like they won the trade. And usually trades are great. It, it benefits your franchise. So you instantly think, well, hey, you know, if it's a good trade, uh, I feel like we won this. But people in Ottawa felt like they won the Zaitsev trade because they got rid of CC. We felt like we got rid of Zaitsev and that stupid contract. So we felt like we won. And right? We were both right and wrong. We were both. It was both. Stop, stop. You're both just terrible. Um, and so John Mulaney, th- <laughs> hey, you're both terrible cereals. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is a unique trade because – Penguins fans tend to agree with Leaf fans. From a guy named Matt. Shouldn't have got rid of that 15th overall selection. From Penn's memes. Fire Rutherford. The first is too valuable. Fire Rutherford quickly before he gives up our other picks. From Dickers91. Might be time to GM change. You can improve the present without giving up the future. Hollander and a 15th overall pick is ridiculous. From Dano for Selkie. GMJR should just retire for everyone's sake. Aiden, who in God's name approved this? <laughs> I assume <What>? the GM. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's next, Adam? Hit me. Because I got one too when you're ready. Um, GM JR must have forgot his meds this morning. You Ooh. know, that's not uh, – I mean, Kapanen and Lindgren are nice, but I'm kind of disappointed that we had to give up a first-round pick. Fire Jim Rutherford. Fire Jim Rutherford. We got fleece. Fire Jim Rutherford. Rutherford is out to lunch. Fire him, fire him, please fire him. Um, Massive L. And these are all from people with like Penguins logos. All right. Penguins for life. I love fans. Fans. So, so I, oh no, where'd it go? Oh crap. I had one up. But basically, I was making the video yesterday and I, (laughs) I wanted to, I wanted to include a tweet in my video. And this person doesn't follow me, so I'm always weary about including someone's tweet if they don't follow me, just in case they're like, dude, I didn't want to be in that video. But this this lovely uh, lovely young woman said, and we gave them Hollander too? GMJR, retire, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) And three clown emojis. One would have been bad enough. Three? Mm -mm. This is not very good. Now, it is, an interesting, it is an interesting trade because from the Penguins' perspective, you do get Kasperi Kapanen, who was a guy you drafted in 2014 in the first round, late 20s. Uh, you feel like you've got him cost-controlled. The Penguins uh, will owe him less than what's actually stated on his contract because of signing bonuses. The Leafs front-loaded the deal on purpose. Uh, the Penguins will not be a cap team going forward. So this is important, too. Uh, there's already been rumors that they're going to have to cut salary. So this is one that... Um, gives them some certainty. Plus, they're not paying the actual amount that's left on his contract versus, you know, you know, you know how that works. They got better on paper. They did. They did. And they get a winger who conceivably could play in the, in the top six with um, Malkin and Crosby. The Leafs, for their part, traded a guy who, and this is, I'm going to quote James Murdoch out of The Athletic here because I think uh, this is a very interesting line. He, uh, incredible article on the trade. Yeah, isn't it great? Yeah, I, yeah usually you don't get something so deep out of just a like, simple trade, and it was like, wow, Myrtle, great job. It was right away. So uh, there's some other stuff in this article I want to get to, but the first part, this is very interesting. He, as in Kyle Dubas, also moved out a player the organization had grown tired of, both on the ice and off. Some teams were initially interested in Kapanen, but decided against the deal after digging a little deeper into some of that. But the league still had plenty of suitors for him much of the year, and given his package of size and speed, 
or sorry, given his package of size and speed, that interest was enough that futures, the, the, that the futures bundle became what it did. So there was a bidding war on Kasperi Kapanen. The Penguins were not the only ones in. And it probably came down to who's giving us a first round pick. And I bet two teams wanted to. Two or three teams probably said, we'll do it. And the Leafs probably said, okay, throw in a prospect. And teams either did or they didn't. And I bet the Leafs took the deal with the highest pick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I bet the, the Leafs said the Devils I bet wanted were, in, but I imagine their pick was too high. The Devils, yeah. the Devils were willing to do it, according to the article, if it was just for the pick, if it was just a straight swap. But uh, they weren't willing to throw in a prospect as well. Where are the Where are the Devils picking? I think it's seventh or eighth, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Top 10. laughs> no way. There's four? no way. There's they abs- wouldn't have thrown four. Do they got a? They've got. It must have a second. They have three. Yeah, oh, they there have, you go. So they the have, center. they have uh, the Devils, they have uh, the Coyotes, and they have the Canucks. So right now, I, the Canucks one can't be set in stone because they're still. But it would in, be higher than it would be higher than what Pittsburgh's will be. Yeah. So the the so Coyotes, I believe, are eighteen according to Cap Friendly, and the Canucks appear to be twenty. So the Leafs yeah. took, the Leafs took the one 15. that's the highest on the board. Mm-hmm. which is great. Good for you. Smart move. Uh, they also get a guy named Philip Hallander, who uh, has been playing against men for a couple of years in the SHL, Swedish Elite League, um, is a, from what we understand, uh, not a great skater, but a good skater. Um, Depends who you I, ask. I saw some debate about that. So I, I'm just going off of one of the scouting reports I, met, I, I read, but apparently sure. hockey IQ is great. Attitude is great. Um, he scores a lot in the Swedish Elite League. Uh, from what I've understood, they're not convinced he'll score a lot at the NHL level, but that he will be a serviceable player. You know, maybe, you know, so hopefully like a center in your, in your bottom six, which is what the Leafs need. And it'd sure. be great if he could step in this season and do that. That would be awesome. Uh, Evan Rodriguez is another guy that is a part of the trade that, you know, if he's qualified, he'll be making $2 million this year. So Kyle Dubas did mention that, listen, we're going to talk to his agent and say, you know, there's an opportunity here for you if you want it. Uh, but they're not going to qualify him at $2 million. They don't have the money. And frankly, Evan Rodriguez probably isn't worth that to the Leafs or many teams in this cap world. They're, you know, the, the, the guys who are smaller on the totem pole are unfortunately going to get squeezed. And um, so. Like Leafs, I, I but, talked about in the past, like maybe they should have just paid Brian Boyle. Like I, I'd said that in years past, this guy and Brian Boyle, you no. know what I mean? If you're going to pay that money, it better be a for sure guy. And Rodriguez, uh, Dom decision was saying, like his stats were terrible this year, but in the past, his model has actually really liked this player. Okay. Um, but that's not, it's not enough of a guy to commit that kind of money to, to play like fourth line minutes. Mm-hmm. That's right. Now, Kyle Dubas did go on to say in some of his interviews yesterday that he'd be willing to move, um, uh, move this first round pick if he needs to. Um, but what this does for the Leafs is, at very least, we know they're not done. And he said, he said as much. Whether they move Hall- Hallander or they move the first or they keep both, um, this restocks the cupboard, which is looking a little bare. Uh, this gets them a pick, two picks after the Patrick Marlowe trade pick, which is good. Um, and essentially, you know, you're trading Kasperi Kapanen and Patrick Marlowe and their cap hits for two spaces down. Uh, in the draft, which isn't bad. Not bad. This is a big win for Kyle Dubas. And, you know, there's a couple, I want to address Kasperi Kapanen in a second here, but first, you know, we've been tough on, and I think rightfully so, Kyle Dubas for the last couple of weeks. He's not a golden out, boy. He's no, not immune. No, especially out of that yeah. press conference, which was just, we just couldn't believe it. But boy, does he make great trades, even if they don't always work out. There are, there are, tra- he's, he's very good at that. And this was a very, very astute trade. It solves a lot of problems for the Leafs. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to freak Peng- Penguins fans out. But Kasperi Kapanen was given the opportunity to play meaningful minutes with Austin Matthews for 20, 30 game stretches. Meaningful minutes with John Tavares and Mitch Marner for 20, 30 game stretches. And by the way, it's Matthews and Nylander, and then Marner and Tavares, and and a mixture of all those those four guys. Matthews, Kapanen, and Janssen. Yeah. At that point, he was still unable to perform in a top six role. 